to. Nice. Yes, the sun rose on Nigeria in 1960. So. Yes, it did, it did. And it is still rising, if you ask me, yeah. because we have not got to the peak yet. Not, it's not We're still on the way, not by a long stretch, mm -hmm. not by a long stretch. Even though there's been a lot of stress in the, in the way. <laughs> well, what a way to introduce the topic. <laughs> oh, we're going to be looking at stress and stressors. That's our lifestyle segment for today, in our lifestyle segment today. Stressful experiences are a normal part of life. There's no way you can avoid stress altogether. And the stress response is a survival mechanism that primes us to respond to threats. Mm. Some stress is positive. Good stress. Like you said at the <laughs> beginning of the program. <laughs> well, we have somebody here who's going to explain all that to us. Imagine standing in front of a crowd to give a speech and something happens to you. <clears throat> wow. When a stressor is negative and can't be fought off or avoided, such as layoffs at work or a loved one's medical crisis, or when the experience of stress becomes chronic, mm. our biological responses to stress can impair our physical and mental health. Well, all that, as um, Dr. Shobandi said earlier, is too lynchy. <laughs> but... Somebody is going to decrypt all of that for us this morning, and that person is Dr. Chris Aboje, consultant clinical psychologist. Good morning. Good morning. And it's a pleasure you. to be here. Thank you for joining us. And happy Independence Day. Same yeah. to you. You're same. just we not wearing you green like we are. Please, no, I'm no. wearing green. <laughs> I don't Before have some people <laughs> start, to, it's green. Is this green? green. It's various green. shades of green. Okay. Yes, like pandedium white. <laughs> <laughs> and Momo Brown. Momo Brown. <laughs> well, first so, of all, help me. My, my, my apologies. Uh, excuse me. Oh, sorry, ladies first. What is good stress? <laughs> <laughs> You're stressing me. Good stress. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that the way to look at it is actually to look at what stress really is. You know, I know that many times when people think about stress, they think about stress from a negative perspective. But in reality, stress wasn't intended to be negative, right? No. Stress is actually a normal response. And the word there is normal. It's a normal response to perceived threats. You mentioned something earlier, which is that it's a response that helps us uh, survive. It's for survival, right? So when you find yourself being exposed to pressure or threats, your body immediately steps in to help you cope. And that response is what we call stress. Now, when it's, it's when that response is not managed effectively that it can then lead to the negative aspect of stress. So when we talk about the positive stress, we're talking about that initial, of course, um, um, response that is, you know, we call it eustress. That's, that's what it's called, eustress, right? EU stress. EU stress, that's eustress, right? So it's a positive kind of stress. And, and what makes it positive is that even though the individual perceives the situation as challenging, they don't perceive it as threatening okay. or threatening enough. So the key word there again is how do you perceive it? Now, when the situation is perceived as not just challenging, but threatening as well, then what that does is that it either increases the length at, of which the body has to secrete the stress chemicals, again, which were intended to be good and help you cope, but then mm -hmm. the body is not designed to accommodate them for a long time, and then they begin to hurt the individual, and that becomes negative stress. Uh, let's, I think you need to take that a little further. Okay. So, you, you stress. Yes, it's the positive kind of stress. Po the positive kind of stress. Yes. Exactly what does it do? It motivates you? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it, it creates motivation. Um, okay. You know, it proves concentration, even helps you with decision making, right? Because at that point, what you see is that your body metabolism is increased, right? Certain vital organs are also, the rate of performance are also improved at that particular time. You probably would notice you're thinking faster, okay. your heart rate increases, a lot of functioning is improved at that particular time. Okay. You know. So is it, a, is it the same as the fight or flight response? response? Well, yes, the fight and flight response is not just um, synonymous to stress. It's also in anxiety, for example. Oh. But what that simply just talks about is 
what your body does to help you deal with threat or deal with pressure. Okay. So it's it, it of course when when the body metabolism is increased, you're able to run faster if you have to run, right? <laughs> you're stronger to fight if you have to fight, and maybe that's where the concept of fight and um, um, fight and flight right. comes from. Is that mm. your performance is improved, and that's the the positive aspect of it. Uh, the question that she didn't allow me to ask yeah. another time. What's the difference between a psychologist and clinical psychologist? <laughs> okay, so the difference is that <laughs> this, the, the clinical psychologist is a specialist, right? Okay. Which is different from just a psychologist. That anyone who goes study psychology can call themselves a psychologist, but you need to specialize in oh, okay. clinical psychology for you to become a clinical psychologist. So you are a clinical psychologist? Yes. Okay, over to you, madam. So you treat patients? Yes. Okay. Now you need to give me an example of good stress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know how <coughs> stress can be good for me. Mm. Because I am one of those, well, okay, there, there are some people yeah. who react to stress in a way that is not very nice. Mm -hmm. And I am one of them. I get uh, skin trouble arising from stress. Mm. And the last time I had that kind of stress, even though I could not identify what the stress factor was, mm -hmm. that skin disease was with me for an entire year. So, what is good about stress, please? <laughs> so, give so, me an example of good stress. So, let, let me give um, an example. If you get an appointment today, right? Maybe an appointment you've been looking forward to, yes. right? Mm -hmm. That's good, right? Yes. But do you notice that it's also stressful? In what way? I'm happy, I'm dancing all over the place, I'm telling Ex everybody, is that stress? Exactly. That's not stress. Oh. <laughs> that's see, joy. <laughs> well, you see, that's why I said earlier that many times when we talk about stress, we focus on the negative aspect of it. If you meet a young guy and a, a young lady who, are, who like each other uh -huh. and they have butterflies in the stomach, that's stress as well. Right? Oh, okay. But it's all a right. positive kind of stress. And the reason why it's positive oh. is because of the perception. That's the key thing there. It's the perception, how they perceive this situation is what makes it positive or not. Why? Mm. Because it's what would determine the kind of chemicals that will be secreted and how long these chemicals will be secreted. Okay, to the script that we be be began with, yeah. someone gets laid off work. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is that positive or that, 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 that's that negative stress? That, no, 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 no. Is that a function of perception? Because there are those who would say, okay, mm -hmm. getting laid off is an opportunity for me to start my business, right? Yes. Is, that, is that the kind of response you're talking about? Yes, that's the kind of response in terms of perception. But if you notice, that is not necessarily a positive stress at the initial point. Okay. Getting laid off, the initial thing could be, oh, this is not a good thing, right? So it's normal for, again, like I said earlier, stress is a normal response. It's normal for this person to you know be stressed at that point but then what do they do about it right okay. so if this person reinterprets it and says maybe there's an opportunity for me to start you know a new business a so business it becomes... or it's, a, it's an opportunity for me to learn a new skill then what they've done is that they've converted that stressful situation to something positive right and that would propel them motivate them to improve their lives but if this person perceives it as my life is over you know nothing good can come out of this then what happens is that then further leads to the negative aspect of stress. So a bit of stress is normal, right? It's how you respond to it that makes the difference. So when people, what's from your experience, yeah. which one is prevalent, the positive or the negative? That's and why? <laughs> That's difficult to answer because it's, um, it depends on the person. Right. Um, okay, the people that you have spoken with. Okay, so the people that I've spoken with, right? <laughs> treated. In, treated, right? Uh -huh. Initially, the negative one is what, you know, many people would complain about, right? Negative stress, living in Lagos, for example, traffic, you know. <laughs> Come on, who complains about good stress? Right. Well, so many people complain about the negative one, but when they come to therapy, for example, when they come into the, the clinic, one of the things that we try to do is to teach them how to create a more, a different perception of the situation. And this is where problem solving then comes in. So rather than just focusing on how bad the situation is, what can we do to change the situation or in some cases manage the situation? So in that case, you're teaching them how to change their perception. And once they're able to do that effectively, then they're changing the, from the negative stress to the positive stress. And how successful do people get at that? How easy is it to change, to help people see a negative thing from a positive perspective? Well, uh, it's hmm, easy. I don't think the word would be easy, right? <laughs> but, but I would say that it's effective. 
it, it's very effective. Now, we're not saying, some, some people believe that when you say change your perception, you're saying deny the situation, but that's mm. not what it is. It's simply accept the situation for what it is, but then don't just stay stuck on the problem. Start thinking about how, how do I solve the problem? It. Exactly, what do I do about this, right? Okay. Accept the situation, that, that's the first step for me. The first step is you learning to accept what it is, you know, but even when you do that, you wanna do that rationally, because that's also key. Sometimes we perceive situations as negative or as stressful or as, you know, but they are not really, they are not, they are not. They are just our own perception that might not be rational. Mm. Mm. Okay, we, we've been talking about stress and yeah. stress and stress. What about stressors? Mm -hmm. What are life's main stressors? Mm. Well, the, the list can go on and on and on, right? Um, anything can be a stressor to anyone. So from getting pregnant, for example, could be a stressor to someone. Having a child, uh, like you talked about having a job, um, getting laid off, these are stressors, right? What we can do is that we can break them down into positive stressors and then of course negative ones where we say that you know maybe the positive ones here are stressors that yes would require some efforts to cope with but we know that in the long run they lead to positive outcomes mm. but on the other hand the negative ones might at that point or be as perceived as a person might not lead to positive outcomes right so there's nothing there might not be anything good in the sense of but for a person who loses their job or who loses a loved one right? But they can then learn how to cope with that situation. So stressors could include traffic, for example, staying in traffic, for example, losing a job, like for example. Like you did the last time. Ah, yeah, like, <laughs> like I did the last time. You know, losing a job, for example, um, losing an invest investment, for example, um, you know, even being served breakfast, right? The breakfast. Yes, <laughs> that breakfast. That could be stressful as well. So the list can go on oh, and on. Oh, you and don't on. know the breakfast we're talking about? Okay, sorry. Okay, so <laughs> heartbreak. <laughs> That's breakfast. Heartbreak. Yes. Yes, it is breakfast. How does it become breakfast? No, you are not in our generation, you know. <laughs> That's what we call it. This so so, so. That, that's a way to describe heartbreak this day. Just as, you know, you've been served breakfast. Oh. Well, well, well. You've yeah. been served breakfast. Can stress be treated? Stress can be managed. I, mean, I think that's a better word, right? Um, it not can, treated. Not, not treated. Yes, it can be managed effectively. Okay. How do you manage stress? Great. Uh, managing stress would bother around two things, right? Okay. Number one, you know, if you look at the definition, we talked about perception. You know, it's how you respond to perceived threats. So the first thing is usually identifying that perception, changing the person's perception of the situation. Um, the second then bothers around lifestyle, lifestyle modification, right? Problem solving skills, for example. For, for, let me give an instance. Um, um, having a couple who are struggling with communication, that can be stressful for them, right? It can be stressful because they don't know how to communicate well. Now, in that situation, introducing lifestyle modification simply means that you need to try to educate them on better ways to communicate. Or in some cases, it could even be conflict management. Mm -hmm. You know, in some cases, it could be planning problem solving, these are skills that could help people begin to manage the situations better, and mm. if they can effectively manage the situation, the level of stress would also drop. Now, can you give us some specifics, an example of some specifics of stress? Mm -hmm. For instance, what they would call work-related stress. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that one? Mm -hmm. Here is a scenario. This stressor mm -hmm. is your boss. Mm -hmm. You go to the office Every, the way you're smiling, you look, it sounds like something you've been <laughs> handling for a while. <laughs> now, you see this stressor every day. You have to report to this stressor every day, even if it's a, a downline. You have to deal with this individual on a daily basis. You can't say no, because if you go to the upline of your upline, mm. it's going to return you to your upline and all of that. So how do you deal with work-related stress? Hmm. That, that's, that's a tricky one, right? But, but I'll, I'll start by saying this. Um, you cannot heal in the same place where you're hurt. <sighs> that, that's that's first thing you need to identify. Can you say that that's again? a tough one. Can you say that again? Say that again. Because the example he gave, yes. your boss is your stressor. Mm -hmm. So do you stop going to work? Oh, no. I want him to say it again before you. <laughs> <laughs> and I would explain that, right? Please, say it again and yeah. then explain. Yeah, so the, what I said earlier is that you cannot heal in the same place where you're hurt, right? Now, what that tells you is that there is, there is a mindset first, 
Yeah. That the solution is not to stay stuck in this place where you're being hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, you can try your best, you can try your best to solve the situation or to think about, analyze the situation and say, what can I do about the situation? That's the first thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. What can I do about the situation, right? Think about it. Now, if it's a situation that you don't have control over, a situation that you cannot manage, then you need to have a plan, mm -hmm. right? What is my plan, right? So if I'm gonna stay in this situation, what is my plan to manage it? Hmm. What is my plan to manage it? So plan would include the duration. How long would I have to stay here? How, what do I do in the meantime while I'm here? Hmm. Right. So you, You're going to speak to that a little further because okay. it sounds like a big issue that we need to deal with. Yeah. Give us a moment. We'll be right back. Okay. Well, thank you so much for staying with us. So, Dr. Aboje, here is where we are now. This scenario of working in, an, in a, rather, what's the word you use now? Um, trying to heal in the mm -hmm. same place where, you've been, where, hurt. where you've been hurt, where you are being hurt. Let's put it clearly, because <laughs> you are being hurt on a daily basis. So what does this person do? Okay, great. So the person needs to come to accept that first, that, you know, I can heal in this place. The second thing for them is to do an analysis of the situation, right? Is there something I can do to manage the situation, right? Or is it outside of my control? Um, if, it's, if there's something you can do, then you then need to think about what can I do? Because sometimes it could just be that you need to learn more skills to be able to manage the situation. Maybe learn to manage your boss better. Uh, but again, still have it at the back of your mind that I can't stay here for so long because it's toxic, right? Uh, but I'm not saying leave immediately, right? Because you need to have a plan. Sometimes it's comfortable to leave immediately. Some other times it's not comfortable to leave. And so in situations where it's not comfortable, have a plan. I call that the exit plan. You know, a couple of months or a couple of years, you're saying to yourself, you know, I can't stay here for so long. So in the meantime, I'm going to develop this skill. I'm going to learn this. Now, what you're doing by doing that is that you're changing your focus. It's no longer about my boss. It's about my own interest. Is that I have a plan to learn certain skills. Okay. And that's basically it. Okay. Um, let me touch on a touchy one. Mm -hmm. First of all, one of the biggest stressors I've been told over the past few weeks that I have had to listen to stuff like that are narcissists. Yes, you're smiling. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to live with this fellow. There is no way you can, nowhere else you can go. And this person could be your child, could be your spouse, mm. could be your boss, could be your mom or dad, could be a relative that is very influential in the family. So, how do you live with this unavoidable, Stress. malignant stressor. Well, thank, thank, thank God that you said that it's a person. It's not something growing on your skin, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's somebody, right? And, and that means that you can leave somebody. You see, one thing about some people who are narcissistic is that we think that we can win arguments against them, right? But that's an error. The goal is not for you to win. The goal is to save yourself. That's the goal. And so you need to re, you know, re, you know, structure that, that. I'm not here to win any arguments. I'm not here to prove that I'm better. But rather, I'm here to create boundaries enough to help me survive. Prioritize your own well-being. Prioritize your survival. That's the first step that you need to do. Talk to somebody. Because sometimes you might not be able to solve all the problems yourself. So you need to talk to somebody, someone you can trust, somebody who is who's going to be confidential as well. And of course, will not judge you. And of course, talking to a professional might come in handy because there are certain things that you might, solutions, problem solving skills that you might pick up by talking to somebody else or even resources that you might come, come in contact with that would help you deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. But I'll say to everybody, right, that whether it's your father, mother, spouse, right, they are not growing on your skin. And if they will cost you your well-being, I don't think you should stay. Mm -hmm. Find a way to exit. Okay. Let's talk about sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, they say that sleep cures a lot of things. Good sleep cures a lot of things. Stress being one of them. Mm -hmm. How can one get better sleep? Mm. After surviving bad what, traffic. <laughs> <laughs> what can one do to be able to sleep better? Some say take this kind of tea, take that kind of they take this tablet, 
but she, and you don't want to get addicted to any kind of pill so you mm -hmm. can sleep. So what can you do so you can sleep naturally? Mm. I think what, what I'll do is I'll start first from how stress affects sleep, mm. right? Uh, so what you see is that the body is designed in such a way that uh, when you're experiencing stress, some chemicals are secreted to help, help you cope, right? Um, adrenaline, cortisol are two of the very familiar chemicals. Um, what these chemicals will do is that in addition to improving your body metabolism, I think the logic there is... Um, if you don't need it, right, doing stress, then you shouldn't be using it. So if I, under stress or under a threat, sleep is the last thing I should be thinking about. So your body naturally would shut down or reduce your ability to fall asleep at that point. Why? Because you need to attend to the stressor. Now, when you're out of that system, for some people, it comes natural. They're able to just go back to sleep and sleep well. For some other people, you need to recondition your mind, help your mind understand that I'm no longer experiencing this. I call that reassurance. Now, once you're able to reassure yourself, your brain would you know, get back to helping you get enough sleep. But in the meantime, what you can do is start with a plan, a daily plan, what they call to-do list, right? Why you want to start with asking yourself, what do I want to do today? Now, why is that important? So that when you're going to bed, you are able to instruct your brain to shut down as well, which is saying, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. It is time to sleep. Now, we, call, we have something we call the sleep hygiene, which are the simple do's and don'ts. That means, number one, you use your bed for only sleep and intimacy, nothing else. No work, nothing else on your bed. Sleep right? hygiene. Yeah, sleep hygiene, yes, yeah, sleep intimacy. So if you're working on your, if you're used to working on your bed, you need to stop it, right? You need to also stay away from screen time. Like some people, when they go to bed, they're playing with their phone. There are some people that are blessed with sleep, that even if you take them to the market square, they will still sleep, trust me. Right? Why well, there are some that will struggle, <laughs> struggle with that. So if you're one of you that will struggle with that, then keep the phones away. I think we, we need to have a completely different conversation on mm -hmm. sleep. Yeah. Because I hear all kinds yes. of things. There, mm -hmm. there are those of us who are what they call photophobic. Mm. Any small light, mm. no sleep. Yes. <laughs> Whatsoever. And you, if you sleep on the light, you have a headache. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to have that conversation at that time. Mm. Um, we, we've been speaking with uh, who? Uh, Dr. Chris Aboje, consultant, clinical psychologist. Thank you very much for coming, but we'll have to bring you back <laughs> to complete that thing. Because sleep is very important to the human being. Yes. That is when our body revitalizes. So we need to sleep. Good. Uh, let me say that sleep is not a waste of time. <laughs> right, and it's not a sign that you'll be poor because I hear people say, "Oh, if you sleep eight hours a day, you're wasting your life." That is not true. That's motivational. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, Thank you. Thank so, you for having Sunrise me. will be right back with the home stretch in just a moment. Please don't go away.